Hey y'all, it's Rosie. Uh, good morning. Pardon the sleep face. I'm trying to do my morning reading and like reflection before I get into anything else today. And you know, I thought, why not periodically do a reading of the steps from the 12 steps book? And then maybe do a reading of the traditions at some point. Well, that way they're like cataloged and recorded and easily like easy to find in case I don't have my book. And something occurred to me that like me before I started going to OA, a lot of people don't really know what OA is about or if it's right for them. Like, oh, I'm not an overeater or whatever, but I still have an eating disorder. Like, is it right for me? So I thought real quick, it's not super long, that I would read the introduction to the 12 steps of Overeaters Anonymous. So here we go. We of Overeaters Anonymous have found in this fellowship a way to recover from the disease of compulsive overeating. We use compulsive overeating and compulsive eating interchangeably. These terms include, but are not limited to, overeating, undereating, food addiction, anorexia, bulimia, binge eating, overexercising, purging, and other compulsive food behaviors. No matter what form our disease takes, anyone having a problem with food can find help in Overeaters Anonymous. After repeated failures to control our eating and our weight, we now have a solution that works. Our solution is a program of recovery, a program of 12 simple steps. By following these steps, thousands of OA members have stopped eating compulsively. Before I continue reading, I just had a thought. I myself am a compulsive overeater, but there are people I've met in my group, etc., who have other compulsive eating habits. Um, particularly, you hear a lot of people who are doing the over-exercising. Basically, and, and I, a sample of that could be eating food. Maybe they feel like they ate too much food. They've been controlling it, whatever. And now they're going to go to the gym and exercise for five or six hours. Things like that are relatively common actually and even common across people like me compulsive overeaters obviously I can't exercise now but there was a period of time where I thought I was in control um, I was controlling every drop of food that I put in my mouth in high school and then I would go and spend four or five hours in the gym until I like physically couldn't keep walking so because I felt like that was the only way to keep up a, a figure. And the thing about compulsive eating or compulsive overeating, however, whatever you have or don't have, I mean, it, this might not apply to you at all. Most of us who have things like this are predisposed to it or there's something that triggers it at one point. But this like compulsion is innate. I mean, it's just, it's part of who we are. So even when you have periods of control or you think you have control, eventually you, you'll fall back to it. So anyway, getting back into the reading. In a way, we have no program of diet and exercise, no scales, no magic pills. What we do have to offer is far greater than any of these things, a fellowship in which we find and share the healing power of love. Our common bonds are two. The disease of compulsive eating from which we have all suffered and the solution that we are all finding as we live by the principles embodied in these steps. Since our program is based on the 12 steps, we would like to offer here a study of those steps, sharing how we follow them to recover from compulsive eating. We hope in this way to provide help for those who still suffer from our disease. 
If you think you may be a compulsive eater, give yourself a chance for recovery by trying the OA program. Our way of life, based on the 12 steps and 12 traditions, has brought us physical, emotional, and spiritual healing that we don't hesitate to call miraculous. What works for us will work for you too. Now, believe what you want. Everyone is going to find a solution that works for them or doesn't work for them. I've only recently been in OA, so uh, I know that the camaraderie shared with the members in my group has had a profound effect on my thinking. And I would say one of the biggest things I've always struggled with is hating myself for the way I am or the things I can't seem to control even when I try my hardest to control them. And one of the things I'm really scared of is triggering myself with something. Um, so there's foods that can be triggers for a binge or cause the compulsion to spiral. And I'm newer to the program, right? So I have an idea of what these things could be, but I haven't truly identified, okay, these are the items that I should probably abstain, abstain from for the rest of my life. Um, but I've been giving it a lot of thought. And one of my, my fears is I don't want to call it a moment of weakness, but in a moment of weakness, giving in or eating or drinking something that could set me off for a binge or what have you and not being able to stop, maybe ending up in the hospital because I've hurt myself because my stomach's like, you know, that big. Um, it's, it's scary. So last night when I was at that birthday party, I reached for my cup. I thought it was my cup and, um, I was drinking unsweet tea and I took a sip of it and it was sweet tea. And, you know, being from the South, sweet tea is a pleasure. And I had this thought like, well, I should just keep drinking it. Like, what does it matter? And it's like, I had to stop. And like, it took a lot of, it took a lot of control. And being overly controlled isn't something I want to do again because I feel like it sets off like negative behaviors as well. Like it's just starting a negative cycle of binging or purging or over exercising or being scared of food and I don't want that again. I don't want to be scared of food. Now whoever's watching this you might not be able to relate to this at all. This is just kind of what I'm going through right now and I'll probably do an additional reading at another time or maybe even today. Who knows? <laughs> Thank you.